VT lesson, we will study further about function. It is a function if every element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. So we will use the vertical line test to see if the graph is a function or not function. If a vertical line passes through a graph once, the graph is a graph of a function. The vertical line should only pass the graph once. Let's have the first graph. So this is the graph of linear equation. So we are talking about if the line passes through this graph once, it is function. If not, it is not function. So if we will draw a vertical line here, it passes through the graph once. So meaning this is a function. Second graph. So if we draw a vertical line here, it passes through the graph once. But if we draw the vertical line at the right side, it passes through one, two points. So meaning this is a not function. You can draw a vertical line anywhere in the graph. It should pass only one in the graph if it passes through two or more points in the graph, it is considered be not function. Let us have the third one. So if we draw a vertical line here, it passes through the graph once. So this is considered be a function. Next, how can we determine the domain and range of a graph? If we have this graph, so looking at the picture, if we extend the graph, all of the values in X will be used. So we will have the this domain. It is read as set of all X such that X is an element of real numbers. Meaning all the numbers, positive, negative, and zero can be a value of X. How about the range? So if we extend the line or the graph, it is possible that we can use all the values, positive, negative, and zero. So our range here is this one. It is read as set of all y such that y is an element of real numbers. So be careful. If your graph have an arrow, it means you can extend it to the left or to the right infinitely. How about this graph? So first, let's have the domain. If we extend it to the left and the right, it is possible that we will use all the values since it has arrow, meaning it can be extended infinitely. So our domain here is set of all x such that x is an element of real numbers. How about the y or the range? So looking at the picture, it only starts with zero, zero going down. So our range is set of all y such that y is less than or equal to zero. So we will start with zero going down to the negative numbers. So we will not be using the positive integers here. How about this graph? So you will need to have the boundaries from the left and then to the right. So for you to get the mean, our last number in the left is negative 3. But looking at the picture, the point is an hollow point, meaning it is not included. We will use the parentheses to denote it. We will have negative 3. And on the right side, we have the solid point, meaning this point is included. So we will have 1. And then we will use bracket to denote that this point is included. So we will use parentheses if it is not included. And then bracket if it is included. Our domain is from negative 2 to 1 because negative 3 is not included. Or we can write this one as, in reading this one, you need to start in the middle. So we will have set of all x such that this x with an arrow is greater than negative 3 but less than or equal to 1. How about the range? So we need to draw the boundaries below and above the graph. So the range will be 
we will have the bracket because we have solid point here and if you don't have solid or hollow point and the boundary is within the graph automatically it means it is included so we will start with negative 2 and 0 because 0 is the highest peak of the graph and it is included because it is within the graph so we have negative 2 up to 0 for the range or we can write this one as set of all y such that this y is greater than or equal to negative 2 but less than or equal to 0. How about this graph? So in order for us to get the domain, we need to set the boundaries from the left and the right side. So for the domain, in the left side we have solid point, meaning this point is included. So we will have bracket negative 2 and in the right side we have hollow point meaning this is not included so we will have three parentheses meaning our domain is from negative 2 up to 2 only because 3 is not included or we can write this one as like this it is read as set of all x such that this x is greater than or equal to negative 2 but less than 3. And for the range, we need to set the boundaries below the graph and then above the graph. So you will focus with the y-axis here. The lowest number is negative 5 and it is hollow point. So it is not included. We will have parentheses negative 5. And then the highest peak of the graph is 4. It is within the graph, so meaning it is included. Or we can write this one as like this. It is read as set of all y such that y is greater than negative 5 but less than or equal to 4. Function can also be defined as it relates an input, which is the domain or x, to an output, which is the range or the y. The range is a dependent variable. It depends on the value of x. So meaning the domain is the independent variable. The range depends on x. So we will change the range or the y as f of x. It is read as f of x or function of x. So if you see this one, f of x, it is just the y. Or we can use another variable for f. It can also be g of x, age of x, or anything. They all have the same meaning, which is the function of x. So here, you will see the f of x because that is just the same with y. So find the range given the function and the domain. So we will have the f of x equals 3x minus 1. So the values of the domain are given. We have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we will find for the f of x or the y. Let's start with the first one. We have x is equals to negative 2. Using the function f of x is equals to 3x minus 1. We will substitute all the x. We will make them negative 2. So we will have f of negative 2 that is x equals 3 times the value of x which is negative 2 minus 1. So we will copy f of negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 that is negative 6 minus 1. So here we have negative 6 minus 1. They have the same sign. So we will add them 6 plus 1 that is 7 and then copy their sign. So the value of f of x if x is negative 2 is negative 7. How about if x is negative 1? So using the same function, we will substitute the value of x. They will become negative 1. So we will have f of negative 1 equals 3 times negative 1, that is negative 3 minus 1. And then we will simplify this one. Since they both have the same sign, 
we will add them so they will become 4 and then copy their sign the value of f of x if x is negative 1 is negative 4 how about if x is 0 so we will have same function and then x will become 0 so this is f of 0 3 times 0 minus 1 f of 0 equals 3 times 0 that is 0 so we don't need to write it and then our remaining number here is negative 1 so the value of the function if x is 0 is negative 1 how about if x is 1 all of the x will become 1 We will have 3 times 1, that is 3 minus 1. So f of 1 is 3 minus 1, that is 2. So the value of f of x, if x is 1, is 2. Last one, what if x is 2? Using f of x equals 3x minus 1, x will become 2, so we will have 3 times 2 minus 1 f of 2 is equals to 3 times 2 that is 6 minus 1 f of 2 is equals to 5 so the value of f of x if x is 2 is 5 so our range here are negative 7 negative 4 negative 1 2 and 5 let us find the range given the function f of x is equals negative 2x squared plus 3. Given the domain, we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we will find for y or f of x. Let us start with negative 2. So we will use f of x. So we will use f of x is equals to negative 2x squared plus 3. So x will become negative 2. So we have negative 2 times negative 2 squared plus 3. Copy f of negative 2 equals. You need to get the, the number with exponent first. So we will copy negative 2. Negative 2 squared. We will multiply negative 2 by itself. So it is negative 2 times negative 2 that will become 4 plus 3. So f of negative 2 equals negative 2 times 4 that is negative 8 plus 3. And then we will simplify. Since they have different sign, we will minus them. 8 minus 3 that is 5. And then copy the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So if the domain or the x is negative 2, y, is, y or f of x is negative 5. How about if x is negative 1? So using the same function, We will substitute x, they will become negative 1. And then we will copy f of negative 1. And then we will first solve negative 1 squared. That is negative 1 times negative 1. It will become positive 1 plus 3. Negative 2 times 1, that is negative 2 plus 3. And then we will simplify. We will have negative 2 plus 3, unlike sign, minus. So we have 3 minus 2, that is 1. And then the bigger number has positive sign. So we will copy positive, but you don't need to write it because it is already understood that this is a positive 1. So if x is negative 1, here f of x will be positive 1. How about if 
x is 0. Using the same function, x will become 0. And then copy f of 0. Let's have 0 squared. 0 squared is still 0. And then multiplied by negative 2 plus 3. Next, negative 2 times 0, that is 0. We don't need to write it. So f of 0 is equals to 3. So if x is 0, the value of f of x is 3. Fourth one, x is 1. Let's have the same function and then x will become 1. Next, we will deal the number with the exponent that is 1 squared, 1 times 1, that is still 1, multiplied by negative 2 plus 3. Negative 2 times 1, that is negative 2, copy plus 3. f of 1 is, we have unlike sign, so we will subtract them. 3 minus 2, that is 1. Copy the sign of the bigger number. Here it is positive. So the value of f of x, if x is 1, is 1. The last one, x is 2. Using the same function, we will substitute x will become 2. And then copy f of 2. And then we will deal first with the number with the exponent that is 2 squared. 2 squared, that is 2 squared. 2 times 2, that is 4 plus 3. Next, negative 2 times 4, that is negative 8 plus 3. And then last one, simplify. Negative 8 plus 3, unlike sign, minus 8 minus 3, that is 5. And then copy the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So the value of f of x, if x is 2, is negative 5. 